How is online college? The media talks about online elementary school and high school, but what about college? And here's my question. Is it hard? Is it easy? Is it something you need? Or can it easily be skipped? Let's do ladies first. We'll do, we're do. we gentlemen here. Let's do ladies first. You guys take this. Answer any or all of those questions. Um, I... It really depends on the subject for me. Um, I'm taking a communications law class, and that's one of the more difficult classes in like my entire college career. And the professor, it's an 8 a.m. class. We're still required to attend. We're still required to zoom in and put on our cameras. So that I find very difficult, especially I feel for the people who are on the West Coast right now who have to uh, jump in at like 5 a.m. Like yeah. Uh, so I feel really bad for them, but overall, it's just, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me on this, but I feel like a lot of it is just, like, busy work that they're giving us that we don't really need, because a lot of these in-class experiences are what we go to the specific university for, and we're really missing out on that right now. I definitely agree. I also don't want to cut you off, Sarah. I was looking at you, I'm like, is she going to talk? So, I, but, um, I... I'm, it's my, obviously it's my last semester at Syracuse University, and I'm taking, like, one class that I actually need to graduate, and I just completed the final assignment today, about 20 minutes before I joined this lovely chat, and now I'm, I'm really just twiddling my thumbs. I'm taking an ancient Greek course that was supposed to be for fun, going to museums and stuff like that, because I was in New York, but now I'm just reading That's about the Peloponnesian Wars on my own. Is it's that, uh, definitely... Cheryl, is that Cheryl Brody? Is that who runs yeah, in New York? Yeah, I'm with Cheryl. Yes, I love Cheryl. Big fan. The of best, Cheryl. the best, the best. Yeah. I used to, Cheryl is amazing, and I used to be able to go into her office every single day. We'd sit down. She'd give me chocolate. It was like the Hansel and Gretel, like, oh, like she just keep. It was amazing. Nothing. You ain't getting nothing on this thing. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> I, I brought my own water, so it's cool. But I, it definitely is disappointing that like I can't have the same experiences that. Like Carrie was saying, a lot of this, like, like going to places, meeting people, it's in-person experience. It's communications. It's, it's part of networking. It's part of our field. And doing it from the, can, like, the inside of, like, my bedroom with my mom right outside the door asking what I want for dinner, it's, it's very strange. So I don't know how I feel about it. It's hard to focus. That's so weird. All right, Sarah, you're up. Yeah, so my classes, it's really interesting because, like, all we're doing all the same coursework as we were doing before so I didn't they didn't give me any more busy work or anything um but I did notice like some classes don't translate the same online like I was taking a tennis class for fun uh, and a yoga class and yes and I obviously cannot do tennis now and I took the final the other day which was like pretty much the end of the course and my yoga instructor's been doing like online yoga classes which is fine but like I don't know, but like a lot of my class work is like the same as it would have been, but obviously the class would have been better if it was in person. Can I ask a dumb question about the yoga? Do you have to be on camera when you're doing it? And are they checking like to make sure you're doing it right? Because that's got to no, be really well, my awkward. Yoga, yeah, well, my yoga instructor, she's really nice. And she's like, you don't have to have your camera on. So she like trusts you do it. But honestly, probably most of the people are just laying in bed. <laughs> That's Shavasana, though, right? Just laying down? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Technically, it's yoga. That's crazy. All right, Daryl, you're up. Let me, let, let, <laughs> what's online school like? And what, 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 is, is it important? That's the real question. Does it have anything to do with what you're gonna be, your life will be like in three months? Um, I, I believe every, well, and being in broadcast and digital journalism, I think everything is going to go digital, but trying to do a major that requires you to literally be in the field recording and literally getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction and in the studio and the equipment, like we're missing out on all that. And then on one aspect, it's just like some of this stuff, I feel like it's just busy work to keep us busy. Because they're trying uh, to justify the tuition. Yeah, that's what, I want my spring tuition back, honestly. But, mm -hmm. hey, I just feel like 
it's a lot of busy work and not so focused on what I really want to be doing as in shooting stuff. But again, COVID-19 has really like put the world on pause. So um, I feel like they're trying to do the best they can with what they got, but I do feel like it's just a lot of busy work. And uh, I just wish it was a little bit different, but I mean, they're trying to do the best they can. A lot, I don't think nobody's really planning for a pandemic. So. No, yeah. no, and, and I'm not blaming them for what they're doing. No, no, that's no. Not, that's not the idea. Um, but I, I do have a follow-up before we go to uh, Sharif and Justin, just the idea that, you know, they're trying to justify tuition. If they said to you, you can pause this semester, you don't graduate on time, but you can complete this semester, you know, kind of like get a credit, like you can complete this semester whenever you want. You could do it next fall. You could do it next spring, do it in 20 years if you wanted to but you don't get your degree until you're done. Instead of doing online school, would any of you guys con considered, hey, you know what? This isn't the way to graduate. This is not how I want to finish my college. Yeah, I would 100%. If I wouldn't wait like a year, I would come back in the fall. I would like go ahead and just get it out the way. Just to get, again, being on campus and getting that on-campus experience with the studio, the equipment, you know, the professors, like, I mean, it's it's a big thing that you're missing, that interaction one-on-one. -on -one. And so I would definitely come back in the fall to get that experience if I was given that option. All right. Sharif, what do you, I saw you nodding your head. Are you in, for, in favor of what he said? I think I would want to finish it out now. I would still be up for coming in the fall just to get some extra reps in, making sure I can, you know, tighten up some, you know, some unfinished business, you know, get, get my skill set, my craft to really hit but you know i think that everybody's you're up trying there to right the you, i didn't mean to interrupt but you're yeah. up there yeah i'm still here actually i felt like it was better for me to stay here just so i could stay focused um and not have any distractions um you know the negative aspect of it is i don't get to see family um anything that's ever happened with my family i'm not as close so i really can't react or do anything but here i am focused I get to uh, read more, uh, I find more literature, and I find myself like really learning more about broadcast because in this time of COVID-19, you have to learn how to broadcast. You have to find different ways to be a digital producer, a digital component, um, and produce this content. So this kind of like really introduces things, and I think this is um, the beginning of the Jetsons media is what I call it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, can I ask you a follow-up? Uh, yeah, you're up there. First of all, do you know anybody that's still up there? Do you have people, and are you quarantining yourself, or like those three people that might be on campus? Are you seeing them? I'm not getting into your. So, well, uh, I am getting into your. I'll, I'm going to be asking all of that because the people that are home, you have no choices. But if you're living alone, how is that quarantine compared to those quarantines? Because your mom's you not outside you the door while you're trying it. to do yoga. Listen, you don't have to worry about it. I have no girlfriend right now, so okay. I'm quarantined. I'm by myself. I do have great friends, though. Actually, the guy that's above me, you know what I'm saying? Daryl Cunningham, one of my great friends. We actually, we hang out because I Wait, trust Wait, you're him. up there, too? Me. I didn't know that. You're up there, too? Yeah, you I'm didn't go here. home? <laughs> no. What's the matter with you two? <laughs> so, I'm here, too. Yes, you're Sarah's up there, there. too? <laughs> I was thinking, yeah. Get out of here! I didn't. I didn't know that at all. Wow. Yeah. So we're we're enjoying ourselves, man. I mean, I trust yeah. Daryl, and uh, we just been making fun of it. We just been board games. We learn about each other. You know, we help each other work on our skill sets. He shoots me. I shoot him. You know, you find out the best things oh, camera, at I a mean, time shoot, like shoot. this. Right. Okay, this is but, fun. but now I have, but th there's a something to that, okay? Because yeah. social distancing. Are you guys staying away from each other or? Do you, Listen, like, like, look, feet, you, you're friends, you're friends, I know. But if he went to the ATM <laughs> and forgot a glove, if he goes to the ATM and forgot a glove and touches buttons and the next thing you know, he high fives you because you did a great take, he could be spreading it. Are you guys concerned about any of that stuff? So here's the thing, right? We are doing the social distancing thing, but we, we trust each other. It's only us around each other. We're not around anybody else. 
The other thing is I am wearing gloves. I'm making sure that I wipe everything down, okay. you know, whenever we hang out. So I'm still being cautious and, you know, conscious of, of what I do when I do something. So it's not like, you know, I'm going to affect him. He's going to affect me. And actually, you know, I, I trust him. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the biggest thing is you don't when you know, know your like friends. Now, I'm not hanging out with 20 friends, 30 friends. That's a different story. Okay. You know, if it helps you with some, he does shoot me 10 feet away. Yeah, that's 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 uh, how it goes, 10 feet. All right, Justin, <laughs> where are you? Justin, where are you? Are you at your parents' house? I, I thought everybody was at their parents' house. I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm I'm also at my parents' house, but, I mean, I don't blame, you know, Sarah, Sharif, Darryl for, for being at school because, look, it, it's not like... Uh, you know, the landlords who they rented their apartments from are, are, are going to tack off their rent. You know, maybe they're delaying them paying it. But you know what? They're still paying to live there. They're still paying for that college experience through tuition, through rent, whatever it may be. So you know what? If they have uh, opportunities to surround themselves with their small circle being each other, being friends, you know, I, I have no problem with that personally. I know I went there for, uh, for about five days just to move out. But I made sure I was there when a couple of my other buddies were there. We were able to shoot some stuff ourselves, um, you know, get one last hurrah at school because, hey, in two months, in two weeks, none of us are even going to be able to take classes anymore. So, you know, to have that, you know, little five days of opportunity to see your college friends, be a student on campus one more time, you know, it was all taken away from us. So, I mean, I can't throw shade at people for, uh, for wanting to do that. Sarah, why did you stay up there? I, and forgive me, I didn't know. Is that why you're wearing orange? No, uh, there's a lot of distractions. Yes. Um, there's a lot of distractions at home, I found. And two of my roommates are up here, too. Um, so, yeah, we're all staying together. Um, it, I just do work much better when I'm here. And if I'm already paying for it, why not? And I get to spend this last like few you know, weeks with my roommates. But your roommates, where did they come? Did they ever go home? And I, I'm so worried about this. Like, like you guys are sharing it a, a yeah. location. Did you separate for 14 days and now you can all hug each other? I, how did how did that work? You're roommates, but you're not you're not sisters and you're not sisters. I'm assuming they're girls. Yeah. Well, well, we all went home for spring break, um, and then we all came back at different times, but. Um, we kind of like quarantined at home for the 14 days. So then to get back, it was very, okay. I don't know, stressed. like immediate. So they didn't stop many places, you know, but, um, you know, we've been here for like a month now. So it's, you guys are healthy and everything healthy. seems to be okay. My yeah. reason for asking this, my reason for asking, and anybody can chime in on this. We had to let our babysitter go. I've had a babysitter that's come to our house from one o'clock to seven thirty every day monday through friday for eight years you know, my kids are 11 and eight. and we had to let her go and she is a sweet lady she's young like she's 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 around my age you know like early 40s she's young she's hip she's newly divorced <laughs> she's but she's not a partier she's not going on dates she's not doing anything but when we talked to her she went to church and i'm sorry we we had to let her go like we furloughed her. We're bringing her back the minute we can, but we had to let her go. And it's not that we don't trust. And that's the reason why I was asking the question to Daryl, Sharif, and Sarah was just because one slip up, like one slip up. And I'll tell you this. I had a fight because this lady on my street uh, didn't respect social distancing. And I was walking my damn dog and she let that other dog come to mine and they got tangled. And she came really close to me and, you know, a leash could be a carrier, you know, their fur because they're not getting groomed. That could be a carrier. And I had to grab this other dog off this other dog. And I'm just like, and I yelled at her and I go, this is how I'm getting it. I've been practicing all these things and this is how I'm going to get it. And I would tell anybody, like, I don't, I wouldn't let my parents come here. I would, you know, just in case. And it, it's that serious. I, I will tell you right now. The guy across the street from me, right there, he has it. 
Two houses down this way, the husband and the wife have. I live that way, uh, walking distance from a hospital, uh, St. Barnabas Hospital, which they tell you in real estate when you buy a house that's near a hospital, that's a cool thing. And I can walk to St. Barnabas right now, and they currently have 680 cases. Oh, wow. I'm scared to death for all you guys, and I worry about all you guys, and I'm not fooling around. When I heard my initial reaction, especially with Daryl and Sharif, because I know that they've been hanging out, I was like, oh, my God, how dangerous is that? And so I understand why you guys are home. I, I totally understand it, but I don't know that everybody else has – I don't expect you to have the same beliefs as me. I don't expect you to have the same caution as me, and that's my fear. My fear is that, oh, it's not in Syracuse, so it's okay, and we can, you know, we can just take a walk on the quad, and who knows who we'll run into, and, you know, you just, your brain slips for a second, and I, 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 I don't think that makes you bad people at all. It's just, I, I don't know, maybe it's the father in me. I worry about all of that. Anybody can chime in. No, I understand that. I think, um, you know, with us, we're just not living in fear, you know? Like, we understand that that's out there. Again, I'm not around anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Nobody comes to my house. I don't have company. Um, I make sure I wear gloves. I wipe off everything. Um, so we're just really just seeing each other. And... You know, we got to kind of, you know, uplift one another and, and be there for each other because we don't have anybody. You know what I'm saying? And especially in a time like this, online courses can get difficult, not because of the workload, but because you can easily get lazy. Yep. Um, you can you can feel like, you know what, this is not for me anymore. You, you get toward the end and you feel like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. So we serve as that purpose. You know, kind of like being you know, informative to each other, helping one another, motivating each other, being inspiration for one another, and helping us get to the finish line. Do any of you homebodies uh, wish you were up there? Uh, well, I don't think... Well, I think... It depends. Sorry, Carrie, I cut you off. But like, no, it's no problem. Um, I feel like, personally speaking, I... Not that I've ever experienced a pandemic before, but, like, uh, my mother is... A, like pretty severely immune compromised so i've always kind of grown up with the mentality of coming home and like sanitized and like having everything very sterile like if friends were sick they weren't allowed over the house if i wasn't feeling well i wouldn't go out and just to make sure she wasn't compromised uh, so i feel like knowing all of that like when the pandemic hit like i definitely took the mentality like and my brother, too. My brother lives out of the house. He graduated um, two years ago from Binghamton, and he was living in Williamsburg. And because of my mom, like, he came back home because he knew that if, like, he stayed there, he really wouldn't be able to come back at all if things were, like, to go down. So he's been, like, chilling in the basement for uh, 30 days, which has been a wild experience because I feel like I'm in high school again. But I feel like I that was my reason for coming home and, like, not regretting it. But also not everybody is in the same situation. I feel like... At the same time, I it's super overwhelming being in a house with like like four people and like a bunch of animals and everybody's trying to work. So I kind of wish that I had that space of my own to focus. Like I yelled at my dad today. He's making money for this family. I shouldn't be yelling at him. I was doing some ridiculous project on how to make an app that doesn't exist. Like I just feel like um it's definitely hard when you don't have your own space. But we all made the decisions we made for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah, Carrie. No, it's no problem. Um, Sonny, kind of going off of your thing, um, my parents are a bit up there in age. They're in their uh, mid to late 60s right now. So I'm oh, they're ancient. kind of how ancient. you're concerned about autoimmune uh, compromise. I'm just concerned about them because they are in that age bracket where everyone is uh, trying to direct those sorts of people, the boomers especially, to, like, stay home and, like, quarantine. So I'm trying to be safe for them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're doing a very similar thing. And it is really difficult. Uh, my parents are retired, so they're already in the house. So I kind of got used to, like, having, like, mom and dad over there while I'm trying to do work. But my sister is home as well. 
because we're in Pennsylvania right now and they shut down schools for pretty much the rest of the year. So it's kind of like what you're going through, Sunny. I feel like I'm back in high school essentially and just trying to like find a way to complete my work while also just like being a decent member of a working family unit. And just to bring up what my situation is, and it's kind of a different side of things. Uh, my parents, opposite to you, Carrie, are fairly young. They're both in their young 40s. Uh, but it's also weird because my dad and I both leave the house for work. My dad works out in the city uh, in electricity, Con Edison, if you've heard of it. So he's concerned Wait, essential where, where personnel. Do you, live? Do you, you don't have to give your address, but where do you live? Long Island, <laughs> Ronkonkoma, Long you Island. You live in Long Island, Strong Island? You live in Ronkonkoma? I live in Ronkonkoma. <laughs> No, you don't. Actually, yeah, I live in Oakville. Did you go to Sachem? Oh, <laughs> you get oh, two okay. Long Island people together. They'll never that's stop so talking about I never Island. met this kid. That's so funny. I'm just sorry. I interrupted you. I interrupted you. I apologize. No, that, that's, that's fine. Great. No, you're good. They're going to find out they're um, across the damn street from each other. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away Wait, from you me. You have the blue house? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. Um, sorry. But, so my dad's out in New York City. He has to go out to work. Uh, I actually, you know, I had a job at school and I need a job trying to build up, uh, you know, some capital to pay off these loans that I'm going to have to look forward to in a few years. So I'm actually working at a grocery store right now, which oh, is the real, uh, you know, ground zero for, for spreading germs at oh the moment. Oh, my God. So, but with my dad and I, you know, knowing that we have to go to work and put ourselves in compromising situations, that makes it more important for not only us, but also my mom and my sister who also live with us to really uh, keep everything in house, uh, make sure we don't spread anything. And oh my thankfully, if my dad and I come home with something, you know, everyone that lives in my house is thankfully going to be okay, all things considered. But we don't want to compromise anyone else around us so we do everything that we can to keep things indoors i want to tell this sports guys a quick story uh three weeks ago i think it was do you guys remember when the nba shut down uh rudy yeah. gobert that was my last positive. day at school second last day at school oh yeah yeah of course of course uh rudy gobert tests positive uh for coronavirus and did you guys see the video Two days before he found out he was tested positive, he touched a bunch of reporters' microphones. You saw that? Yep. He was, uh, wasn't he uh, kind of mocking it? Well, yeah. So I will, I will send it to you guys. Subscribe to my Sports with Friends podcast because one of the five guys whose microphone Rudy Gobert touched, I had on the show. And I'll just tell you oh, wow. a quick story. He wow. has two little kids, two little daughters, younger than mine. And he works the Utah Jazz pre and post game, but he doesn't do every game. He splits it with two other people. And he wasn't on that night in Oklahoma City. He wasn't on. So he's watching the game from home. And he knows that Rudy Gobert was touching his microphone. He, he knew it. And he's downstairs and he has like a split level house. So his like family room has a sliding glass door to his backyard. And the kids and the, his wife were upstairs, and he sees that the Jazz game is suspended because a player tested positive, and they find out, it's on Twitter, that it's Rudy Gobert. And he knows Rudy Gobert touched his microphone. He ran out of his house. He stopped everything and ran out of his house and didn't see his kids for 14 days. He was so scared that he had infected his kids. He was so scared. I'm not plugging a podcast here. Like we we got a lot, no. a lot of downloads on that one, but holy but Jesus, that that story was nuts. And then last week we had uh, Ryan Rucco, who's my buddy. He was calling the game for ESPN when the NBA suspended its season, and he had to be on the air. And he his partner is Doris Burke, who tested positive. And three days earlier, he was on the plane with the Brooklyn Nets, and four guys tested positive. There's no way he didn't have it. There's no way. 
and Man. he was and I talked to him. He was on my podcast, and he's in quarantine too. Like, it's all it's rampant. It's rampant everywhere. And so, as much as this part of this is, I I feel bad for the situations that you guys are in. When when I heard Justin's story. And it's admirable, and seriously, admirable for what you're doing, man. But I, I am worried to death about you, and only because I've—that's all the stories I've heard. And it's not a tough thing; it's not a macho thing, because Rudy Gobert's a tough dude. And you know, one side note to that story: Rudy Gobert was being very uh, careless in the locker room, and he was touching other guys' stuff, and he infected Donovan Mitchell, another NBA player. And two days before he found out, Donovan Mitchell went to an elementary school and took pictures with 250 kids. And he put his arm around all of them. And I don't know how many kids he infected. Like, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. 